We buy a willow and little Tom Tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. Hello. <laughs> Dr. Bigford. Sid McKnight. You're a day early. <laughs> You're on a scooter. A Segway human transporter. Works on a gyroscope. You think forward and off she goes. You think stop and she does. Revolutionary. I've heard of it. Where'd you get one? A colleague of mine at Harvard invented it. Dean Kamen. Cutting edge. Join us. Why don't you? Until tomorrow. Sydney McKnight is here to recruit you? When I was at Harvard, everyone came to him. Politicians, artists, even sports figures. Are you going to accept his offer? He hasn't made one. He just met. Do you have a match? Can't smoke in the hallways. I can when we go outside, match. You just came inside. It's for later. It's the last cigarette in the pack. I don't want to be searching around for a light when I go to smoke it. Do you have a... No, I do not... Uh, Darlene, do you have a match? Oh, sorry, Professor Haskell. I quit. Oh, well, good for you. I thought you were going to try to quit. I am. You know, I knew this guy used to carry around his last cigarette as a challenge. For three months, he used to take it out whenever he got the craving. He used to talk to it, even. What happened? He died. Just kidding. He quit. You ought to try it. <laughs> no, thank you. I have a hard time talking to inanimate objects, other than you, of course. I'll do it my way. Your way is to put things off. So, why did Dad call this family meeting? I told you, I don't know. Max, I have traveled across the country in a plane. I am entitled to know what this is all about. Well, what could it be about? He's 84 years old and he's got terminal cancer. Wants to talk about his will or his burial plot or his memorial service or all of the above. Mystery solved. Let him do it his way. Well, excuse me, mister. I've argued with my father every single day of my life, but suddenly I want to let him do it his way. Want some tea? No, just hot water. I brought my own bag. Town car. Very nice. You only live once. Think you brought enough luggage? Pop. Oh. You look great. Thank you. You look different. Oh. oh my god, it's the beard you shaved. You <laughs> shaved your beard? Oh, I've never seen your old face before. She says it makes me look younger. Who says? This is Pat, my fiance. I thought it would be nice if we planned the wedding together. <laughs> Have you two been together? We just celebrated our hundred day anniversary. Really? Well, congratulations. And uh, how long have you been engaged? I haven't had this many questions since my army induction. She's just interested. I've been here only five minutes and already you're ganging up on oh, me. Jay. She's a shiksa. She don't know from arguing. Oh, the Irish can get pretty loud. Yeah, after a few snorts. Listen to that laugh. Pure music. Please. <laughs> My wild Irish rose. When are you two planning on tying the knot? We've had a long trip. We're going to lie down now. We'll discuss it all later. Nice to have met you both. He's Meshuggah, you know that, right? Seems happy. Happy? That's not happy. That's denial. He can't accept the fact that he's dying, so he invents a whole new life for himself. Maybe it's you that's in denial. Me? We don't even know this woman. We don't know what she's after. Why are you so upset? Really? I don't... I don't know. I just, um...
It's a quite lovely campus, Max. Green and lush. Smell spring. Mm, harbor's about to pop as well. Chadwick lacks a weeping willow. A tree was so your weeping willow. There's one outside my window at Harvard. I planted another one at my shack on the Cape. You planted a weeping willow? They couldn't keep the ficus alive. Take the job with us. I'll have you knee-deep in manure in no time. <laughs> I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow? It will Sorry, Gilbert. Sullivan. And I said to Max Bickford, why do you sit at Chadwick when you could fly at Harvard? I'm told you turned us down in 89. Bad timing. You just had Lester. You jilted Yale in 91? Well, I didn't want to uproot my kids. Wise choice. Other than the pizza, New Haven is horrid. Columbia in 95. My wife had just died. Oh. And what's your reason these days? <laughs> it ain't broke. Uh -huh. Hi, Professor Bickford. Hello, Danielle. Can I just say, I, I dropped out of college for a year to work, and reading your book is what made me come back. I wanted to thank you. Not at all. Well, I'll see you in class tomorrow. <clears throat> Charming and flattering. I can see why you find it hard to leave, but I'm curious. Why even entertain the notion at all? Well, Harvard is the ultimate carousel ride. I don't think I'm going to get another chance at the brass ring. I offer you steady discourse with foreign heads of state, Nobel laureates, world-class artists, and courtside tickets to the Celtics to book. Oh, now you're talking. Did you know I'm published in the Times off-ed section at least twice a year? I've read your pieces. Point is, I should be reading yours, and when you come to Harvard, I will be. When an intellect like yours encounters the polymath that is Harvard, the sparks will fly. I'd like that. You're as ready to burst forth as is this bud. Winter has ended, Max. And Harvard is your spring. You're seeing Greg again? He's so not your type. Yeah, tell me about it. My dad will love him. You're introducing him to your father. Well, I figure I always show up with rockers, rebels, and skate punks, and I finally have the genuine all-American boy. Why not? So have you two, uh... Oh, that's so not your business. Sorry. But if, you know, you ever feel the need to spend the night in Kathy's room, I won't object. <laughs> Where is he? Gone home. Anything I can help you with? Do you smoke? No. Oh, then you can't help me. Well, Professor Bickford doesn't smoke either. He did. And he drank and he did drugs. And he kicked them all. He knows the secret. There's no secret. I smoked two packs a day until six years ago. They say it's about will... That's not how I quit. So what's the secret that isn't a secret? I was at my mother's bingo game. All these women smoking like chimneys, me included. And what they all had in common was how old they looked, even though they weren't. And I thought about all those smoldering leaves permeating my pores and drying out my skin all those years. I quit the next day. You have beautiful skin. I hate to admit it. But black lung pales in comparison to premature wrinkles. Oh, thanks, Lorraine. This really helped. Anytime. So, Gramps, do you want my band to play at the wedding? I'm sorry, kid. It's going to be salsa. Are we talking about the music or the dip? We go Latin dancing every Friday. Tango, mambo, you name it. Well, that's risque. They have uh, Latin night at the cork every Wednesday. Let's all go together. It, it's great for your circulation. No, 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 I don't see myself. On the dance floor. You should see Pat. She's Carmen Miranda and Ginger Rogers all rolled into one. Oh, gee. <laughs> Dad, did you consult a doctor about this? I consult a doctor about disease, about dancing. I'm on my own. I'm just saying it's very strenuous and in your condition. What, what condition does a grown person have to be in to have a good time? I think she's just saying that it might be a good idea to get a stress test. Who are you? The interpreter? For your information, I did have a stress test. I'm not a complete imbecile. Oh, nobody said that. They don't have to say it. You don't, you don't know these kids. So, 
How many folks are you inviting to the wedding? Not that many. Most of the people we know are dead. The present company accepted. <laughs> so, where's it going to be, uh, Temple Emanuel? St. Bartholomew's. Sorry? You're converting? Did I say that? Pat wants a priest. My first husband was Lutheran. I wanted a priest. He insisted on a minister. I always regretted it. I couldn't have children. And, well, nobody can tell me that there wasn't a connection. I guess you and I will have something more in common, huh, Dad? We both marry Catholic girls. But yours converted. Is that what you're saying? Did you hear me say that? What I do with my life is my business. I'm agreeing with you. You spring this on us at the last minute, and you expect we should just... I'm 84, and I have cancer. It's all the last minute. I... I, I didn't mean to cause a family. Pat, you don't have to apologize. She doesn't have to apologize to you or to anyone else. That's what I'm saying. It's all right, Jay. No, no, it's not all right. I tried to include them, and look what happens. Let's go take a walk. No, 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 Pop, don't go. I'm, I'm going to go get a little air, if that's all right with you. Or do you want me to consult with my doctor? I hope that you can accept what we're doing. If not, we'll just head back to Brooklyn. We're certainly old enough to do this without you. Dr. McKnight, your first book, Art Above All, is like this tapestry of words. But if I knew more about you... Oh, dear, you Yanks are obsessed about knowing the intimate details of one's life. It's an American tabloid mentality. Which the English news of the world invented. <laughs> How old were you when you wrote it? Why? Curious to see if I look my age. I hope it won't affect your perception of the book, since the question challenges its very premise. Art transcends the artist's persona. I'm not sure I agree with that. Professor Bigfoot rescued me from my persecutor. <laughs> you need about as much rescuing as a bull in a sheep meadow. <laughs> Danielle, why don't you accept the book's position? I just wonder, can we really separate, say, Bill Clinton's policies from his persona? We can, because apart from his oral sex doctrine, his policies made good sense. Besides, my book is about art. Then what about Ezra Pound? He was a fascist and an anti-Semite. And delusional. But when sane, as cool as the pale, wet leaves of the lily of the valley, she lay beside me in the dawn. It's a tasty little verse, and the cantos ain't too bad neither. Wasn't Picasso a terrible misogynist? Can we look at his work without that in mind? Even if his paintings were the only place where he treated women with respect, he did it publicly and reverently, that he was an oaf back home to the little lady who cared. <laughs> well, the little lady, for one. <laughs> <laughs> to reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. Thank you, Oscar Wilde. <laughs> and thank you, Sidney McKnight, for joining us. See you on Friday. Uh, Dr. McKnight, I was wondering why you haven't written a book since 1993. Uh, for the same reason, Danielle, that I haven't left the class to relieve my bladder. I haven't felt an urgent need to do so. Warrior pose. If yoga is all about inner peace and spirituality, how come they have things called the warrior pose? Breathe. It's antithetical. It's metaphorical. It's, it's hypocritical. You're being cynical. Just being practical. How atypical. Are you being ironical? This is becoming farcical. <laughs> Maybe for you, but for me it's torture! Open into warrior two. Isn't there anything called a fetal pose? If you're talking, you're not breathing, and the oxygen isn't circulating. My 84-year-old father tango dances for circulation. Good for him. And plank pose. He wants me to accompany him and his fiance. <laughs> Fat chance. Why do you say that? Am I going to learn to tango? Okay, let's go.
let's try something a little different. Well, I won't do that. You want to be showed up by your 84-year-old father? Come on. Latin dancing's all about the hips. Too much torso. Lower your center of gravity. From the tut ski. The what ski? Here. Here. There's no such word as chutzki. Not in Yiddish, not in English, not in Spanish. It's a feeling. Go with it. Aren't you a little too Nordic for all this? Indian exercises, Latin dancing, uh, uh, Chinese, uh, what the hell? Work your hips, not your lips. Left foot forward. One, two, three. Ah. Now you're getting it. <laughs> I told you I got as good a chutzki as the next guy. Woo! I have something to tell you, kids. I've been offered a job at Harvard. And if I take it, we have to move to Boston or Cambridge. It's a pretty big opportunity. I turned this down once before. But it feels different now. You know, I spent my youth at a school like Harvard. And I just feel like I might want to spend what's left there also. What do you think? Well, it's your life, Dad. Go for it. When was the last time you were in a classroom before yesterday? 1902. <laughs> I hope they didn't drive you too crazy. Nothing that a decent claret and a good dinner didn't fix. Hello. I'll be your waitress today. Oh, dear. Someone's planets are misaligned. <clears throat> Danielle, uh, what's the fish special? There isn't one. Chef's truck broke down. He never made it to the Boston Wharf. That would never happen at Harvard. What can I get for you? Beef stew. Bombay martini, no fruit or vegetables, thank you. Uh, turkey burger, no bun, and sparkling water. I reread your book last night. 346 pages. When did you sleep? I couldn't. I was hoping we might discuss the chapter on Lini Riefenstahl before you went back to Cambridge. I think Dr. McKnight would like to just have lunch. Can we arrange that? Right. Sorry. Persistent little thing. Well, they're used to having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the faculty. Sydney, your offer is very tempting. But? I love Chadwick. My kids were born here. My wife died here. I drank myself into oblivion and pulled myself up by my bootstraps here. It's a part of me. But... <clears throat> The truth is, it has felt a little too safe for me lately. I mean, my father, who is 84 and terminally ill, is about to marry a woman that he has allowed himself to love. And it's in your blood to be adventurous. What the devil are you waiting for? If you're strong enough to bend, then let me songs from this hidden place inside of you with this depth of, of passion and, and sensitivity. Okay, you're gonna have to stop. I don't want to stop.
This really hurts. Why? I love you. I know the guitar hurts. It's pressing in on my ribcage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um. So, um, what you just said then. Yeah, that was, um, <laughs> just delete that. So you didn't mean it? Yeah, I did. Good. Because I'd hate to be the only one. At my age, this is a pretty momentous decision. But at the moment, all the signs are pointing towards Cambridge. I just have to sleep on it. I look forward to your awakening. <clears throat> My father once said that middle age was the time you realize you only knew about half of what you thought you did. His father told him, and that's the good news. Wait until you hit 70. Quite. Well, I'm off. Max? You were 30 when you wrote your first book. Have the views you espoused changed since then? Why does it matter so much to you? You're here, in person, and I'm investigating this question of artistic and civic responsibility. Call it a guiding principle of life, and your life... Young lady, my life, my mind, my being is not your science project. You wrote about... Danielle, you should be grateful for the time Dr. McKnight gave us in class. I would be if he provided us with anything tangible. I'm quite certain I attended your class as a guest under no obligation to provide anything other than my presence. Huey Long was... was a politician I wrote about art. An uncompromising egalitarian. He was also a criminal. How do we judge him? By his work or his persona? His legacy exudes a distinct U.S. of anus. A complete lack of U.S. of anus after 25 years in this country being a special feature of mine, I really couldn't say. Danielle, I think this would be an appropriate time for you to make an exit. Leni Riefenstahl... ...was a brilliant filmmaker... ...whose films are inextricable from her fascist aesthetic... ...who was... ...who was what? Only following orders? Danielle, you have just crossed the border into harassment town. Please go. Meeting you made me want to reread your book. Last night. Well done. No! I mean, while I didn't agree with everything in your book, it's honest. But in person, you use your genius to avoid honesty. I'm so disappointed in you. If you think that reading a book, looking at a painting, or listening to music entitles you to anything other than the privilege of being moved, then you are as stupid as you are brash. How dare How you? How dare you have the audacity to be disappointed in me, whom you know from a book collector and a poorly served lunch? I owe you nothing. Nevertheless, I offer you some advice. Take your arrogant, condescending immaturity and lodge it where the sun don't shine, as they say in this part of the world, you irritating little sod. Oh, Danielle. Oh, oh, oh. I know. This would never happen at Harvard. Thanks for the lunch. The tea's on me. those workouts seem tame. Come to my aerobics class. Well, I'll throw in some white wine, a little caviar, and I might sign up myself. I'm counting the days. <clears throat> How did you get her to go out with you? I told her you were nervous about dancing in public and needed me for moral support and her for technical assistance. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. It worked, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. I should have taken this up years ago. Yes, Mom would have loved that. I, I 
think I'll go and powder my nose. Now, hold on, Pat. I'll go with you. Did you have to say that? Do you have to behave like a teenager on a first date? Sharon, what is wrong with you? Don't you lecture me. I'm your father. Yeah, well, then why don't you act like it? I'm gonna go water my horse. I need a cigar. Anyone else? You don't smoke. I think there are better ways to poison your body. Drink? Not really. Drugs. Chocolates. It's my downfall. Nell tells me that you intend to go to med school. Looking for the big bucks, huh? <laughs> Genetics research. Um, how to cure diseases, that sort of thing. Can I be honest with you? My daughter doesn't usually... My daughter has never gone out with someone like you. What's up? I can't speak for now, but... To me, now is just... She is so far ahead of, of, of any other woman that I know, there's this level of maturity. <laughs> now, really, she is so in touch with her own feelings that it forced me to be. And I just, I love her. So, what I miss? Max, call me when you get this, no matter what time. You're not gonna win this, you bastard, because I don't need you. Ah! The first time I saw Max dancing was before the prom. <laughs> Practiced in the den, remember? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't think anybody here wants to hear about it. <laughs> Was that like 1968 with the wide lapels, uh, yeah, the fat bow tie, the ruffled shirt? I've seen those pictures. Very cute. <laughs> he, he got his dancing prowess from me. Oh, Dad, I don't remember you and Mom dancing. Sure we did. You told me you did. We did. You never went out dancing. You weren't with us every day of our lives. Don't give opinions. I'm not one of your patients. So, um, Isabel, how's my dad doing with the yoga and the tai chi? Very well. He's learning how to relax, to breathe. Breathe? I thought you'd already mastered that. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing during exercise centers you. He, he's off center? Spiritually centered. Well, whatever turns you on, Max. Now, don't make fun of what you don't know. Don't stick your nose in where it doesn't. Look, he does yoga, you dance, so what? Live and let live. Anytime one of us does something you don't approve of, leave him alone. We're here to have a good time, and God knows how many more of them any of us have got. If you can't embrace that... talk about it it's my line the other one is I'm afraid our time is up Pat's gonna be part of his life whether we like it or not it's not her it's them he never treated our mother like that never well I mean all the hand-holding and that listen to her laugh crap first of all we weren't there for mom and dad's courtship they could have been holding hands the whole time and why does it bother you she thinks I don't deserve to be happy because I made your mother miserable sometimes. It's just hard to see you treat this woman. Her name is Pat. Better than you treated our mother. Your mother and I had our differences. Every couple does. But I loved her for 62 years. What lies ahead for me ain't pretty. I shouldn't grab the last bit of happiness. Pat is a great gal. And she laughs at my jokes. Maybe Mom would have laughed at your jokes if you weren't always yelling at her. It was a two-way street. Yes, it was. But for the record, you were louder. So tell me, Pop, 
Can Pat take care of you? You're afraid she'll steal that privilege from you? Well, you do have a way of shutting us out. Didn't I bring her here to plan the wedding with you? After the fact and without consultation. Stop being a doctor. Be my daughter. Be happy for me. I truly wish I could. I feel terrible. I made a mistake, and... Will I be expelled? Should you be? Maybe. I, I want to apologize to him. That would be good. I'm so stupid. No, you're not. Which is what makes this whole thing so infuriating. <sighs> Why did you press him like that? He's written things that mean so much to me. He knows things I don't, and... He was so close. And I'm... I'm sorry I embarrassed you, Professor Pickford. Can you forgive me? I'm not going to go to Harvard. I see. Sydney, this place invigorates me. If I'm having a bad day or a dark moment, Inevitably, some bright-eyed student says something that breaks through the gloom. And I just don't want to give that up for a bigger pension. Or a better view from the office. I see. Sydney, what Danielle did was wrong. But you were out of line. You said that something like that could never happen at Harvard. I wouldn't want to teach at a school where students couldn't throw food at you. As for Danielle... As for Danielle... Do you know what this is? I assume a tweed coat is not the answer you're looking for. Correct. It is a Harris tweed coat from Harrods of London, which I bought in 1979. I wear it regularly. And yet it remains as crisp as it did when it hung on a rack 23 years ago because it is so expertly tailored, so painstakingly crafted that its durability is infinite, the design is timeless, and now it has a dirty great tea stain all over it. You Yanks are obsessed about punishing the British with tea. Sydney, I'm sorry about the coat. I, I apologize. I, I know Danielle is sorry, and she would like to apologize. She would, would she? For leaving an indelible stain on my Harry Street from Harris. Well, I don't accept her apology. Sydney, she's just a kid. She threw tea at me. At me. The Defence Minister of Australia, a decorated five-star general, once snuck out through the kitchens at a state dinner to avoid me because he heard I was cross with him, and she threw tea at me and my... Harrods Harris Tweed. I'll never forget it, never. I'll buy you a new one? I don't want a new one. I want to frame this one. To remind me I'm alive. This girl stung me. This girl excavated my memory of me and my vocation. You do see. Mm, actually, no. She was right. I've stagnated. I give dull, cerebral answers because in my world no one ever really wants to know anything. But her questions weren't just esoteric. She has a dilemma in the present, and by God she needs an answer, and I wouldn't give her one. Disgraceful. Well, you're out of practice. These kids are bright and hungry. They take no prisoners. And it must be like that at Harvard, too, but... You've been out of touch with them for a long time. It's the classroom that keeps me alive. I'm the ref, Max. You're the dean of faculty, Sydney. Just assign yourself a class or two. It would be all wrong. After nearly 30 years at the joint, I'm no longer an individual. I'm a bloody institution. Sorry to waste your time. I shall pack and be on my way. Thanks. It's an honor. Max, don't forget the 
skin the chicken and trim all the fat. There's no fat. I just got feet, beaks, and gizzards. Jay is so meticulous. I just admire that. Max, do you have any carrots? He loves carrots in his salad. Really? Huh, that's a new development. Sharon. Right. So tell me, where are you two going to live after the wedding? Oh, well, we'll stay in our own places and shuttle back and forth. It's hard to move at our age. You accumulate so much, and it takes so long to unpack, and, well, anyway, don't worry. You'll be able to care for him when the time comes. Jay told me what you said. Pat, uh, well, we certainly didn't mean... It's all right. We met at a support group for cancer patients. Chances are I'll be the one who goes first. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. He's so thoughtless, so stupid, and so... Narrow-minded. Max, I said I was sorry. Not to them. Hey, Dad, um, Grandpa says if you don't start the fire soon, we're gonna have to change the menu to eggs and bacon. Oh, look at those two. They're, like, really happy together. It is so nice. <laughs> Norman Rockwell family or what? Max, I, I looked everywhere for it. I can't find it. And I've got to find it because I haven't smoked it. And now it's over. And if I don't find it, then... Gotcha. Sorry, Max. Destiny calls. but he was never known for his joviality unless he was having someone publicly executed. So what did Churchill and Truman do? Forgive me. I wonder if I might have a moment of everyone's time. Please. I'm afraid I was less than fair with you the other day. I was more a prize fighter than a teacher, bobbing and weaving and dodging your questions. If I may, I'll try another approach. A great artist, when at work, is incorruptible. And it doesn't make a damn bit of difference what god he or she may be serving. Sidney McKnight, 1971. I still do believe that. However, in our everyday corruptible world, we are all responsible for our own corruption. The artist included? Yes, Miss Hodges. Yes. But I thought that's what I've been saying all along. Well, if I may, I think what you thought, Danielle, was that if you somehow knew who Sidney McKnight was, if you knew what he ate and where he slept and why he wrote, that it would somehow explain the work better but the dilemma is that art can be understood but it can't be explained i never meant to question the work that's precisely what you should do question it contest it challenge it and yourselves as well the unexamined life is not worth living socrates would be delighted with you miss hodges so then art doesn't excuse us but it may survive us. Well put. Thank you. I can't wait until you write something again, Dr. McKnight. Odd you should say that. 
I turned to poetry last night, Max. This is hot off the press. I'm sure you'll be kind. A rosy-cheeked scholarly chap took a 30-year scholarly nap. When at last he awoke, a much older bloke, it was quite clear he'd become full of crap. <laughs> That's the most fun I've had for a hundred years. For them, too. And me. You're great. I don't want to go. Well, go tomorrow. Have dinner with my family and me. You'll have fun. No. I'm saying I want to stay here at Chadwick as a professor. I started on a campus like this, small and intimate, a green and a pleasant sort of place. I was a teacher. Not an administrator, nor an author, nor an icon. A teacher. I should be here. Um, <clears throat> You're a little big for this place, wouldn't you say? Am I? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you said. What do I do if it's broken to bits? Is there a position available? Well, if there isn't, we'll shoot a professor and make one. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Absolutely. Well, let's take a walk over to Judith's office. Actually, I have a better idea. I brought you a little something. Ready? Yep. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit? Tit willow, tit willow, tit willow. So again. And I said to him, Dickie, di uh, Dickie, I said to him, Dickie Bird, why do So I said to him, Dickie, Dickie Bird, no, why Dickie, Dickie. Yum. Dad, what are you doing? I'm meditating. It's better than medicating, according to your friend Isabel. What do I know? I, I figure it couldn't hurt. <laughs> Yum. I think it goes like this. Um. You were always distracting, even as a kid. Oh, oh, oh. How, how does it go? Um. Um. Was I really that terrible as a kid? Probably not. I was a hard ass. Yes, you were. You think you're doing so much better with Lester? I hope so. Although he did smoke pot recently. Where is everybody? Lester's in Hebrew school. Sharon and Nell took Pad shopping for a wedding dress. You want to be my best man? Well, your other choices pass away? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> I accept. Thank you. Oh. So, Pop, how are you feeling, really? Well, like maybe uh, I get to see another year. If not, uh, I've had a pretty good run. How about you? Well, I'm not ready to check out yet. Still a lot of things I'd like to do. I feel like I just get started. But a lot of that is out of my hands. Oh. Oh. 